Soon I'll be uh, taking. Ooh, recording soon in I'll progress. Probably taking PTs for uh, skateboarding. If anyone's interested, hit me up. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> your PTs for your skateboarding would be me showing uh, hair maintenance. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's an honest mistake, Kieran. You like you, you thought you'd be out. We told yeah. you you wouldn't be out. Oh, you're having a mm -hmm. beer at four o'clock in the afternoon. Life's going well for you. <laughs> <laughs> I just worked out. So I did. Do you remember what that's like? No word of a lie. For the first time in four years yesterday, I had a uh, sip of alcohol. I had a sip of Ooh. gin and tonic, and I think I was tanked. And, Why? Uh, since April 2017, and um, slept really well. And then I dreamt that I went to a pub and bought some pints of beer. So <laughs> perhaps by Sunday, I'll be tanked. Tanked. What was the occasion, <laughs> man? I'm a bit disappointed in you, to be honest. The occasion was the uh, announcement that my gym will continue to be a equipment storage till possibly <laughs> end of November. <laughs> but I'm, I'm being very careful with it because it's like it's a, it would be a slippery slope. My, my, my personality is I won't have coffee for three months and then I'll have all the coffee for the rest of the time. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I probably won't do that again. I literally had a buzz off it. I don't know if my wife would remember to put any... Uh, any tonic with the gin or it was just pure gin so speaking of which are you on coffee or are you off coffee at the moment oh, i'm, I'm the... so much coffee i'm on all oh, the yeah, yeah. fire week of course sorry Silly me. so have... many fads i can't keep up coffee tea fucking beers no beers you name it man food the no beer has been no beer for forever and, and that's the only thing you've stuck with yeah, and, and you'd be happy to know that yesterday I had uh, Persian food delivered and I didn't send you any photos. I had it for lunch and dinner. Was it as good as Sydney? Better than Sydney. Much better. You know yeah. what made it so good? I didn't have to look at your face while I ate it. That's oh, it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, I don't think everyone needs to be subjected to this all the time, listening to us bag Andrew. Obviously, it's... Um, so guys, uh, last week we sort of set a bit of a format for this uh, Muay Thai hour, which is 15 minutes, which could be half an hour if Andrew spoke faster. But uh, we're going to follow on that format. Um, so we'll, we discussed the um, uh, male division of under 57 kilo. Um, this week we were thinking about uh, the women's divisions. Um, Kieran, you sort of suggested we just go everyone under 57 and discuss it. Well, we I, th I think because if we're looking at, we, there's a few dominant divisions right between maybe, or, or, or not dominant, but you've got some like standouts around 50, 51, 53, 55, then 57, under 50, maybe not so much. And then over 57, it obviously gets a bit sparse as well. So we can cover quite a bit of the female really fight scene in Australia quite quickly, I think, but probably... <clears throat> And I'll let either of you correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I would say that when it comes to maybe like a, a pool of professional female fighters in Australia, it would start around that 50, 51. I, I really wouldn't say there's many standouts professional, I should say underneath that sort of 50, 51, unless anyone wants to. Yeah. We had um, me. Sally Zhu, who's trained by Keith Grant at immersion. And she look, Keith reckons she could probably fight it. 44, 45 kilos. And Ooh. we've had her, I think, fight as heavy as 47 or 48. She fought um, Yun Zia from Dynamite for a WMC title on Roots a few years back. It was a sick fight. And Sally's, you know, like she could fight 47 and she's very good. But it just got to the point where we had to keep bumping her up to yeah, 49, exactly. 50 kilos. And now she's just basically doing jujitsu. Mm. Um, and then there's uh, obviously Yun Zia from uh, in Victoria. This is I'm speaking purely from Victoria. Then you got um, Yun Zia from Dynamite, and then CC Rollinson uh, from uh, Strike Studio under Chris Cortez. That's been our sort of core three girls that we've had under that division, but it, it's just so hard because. You can't really offer them fights. Like Cece, I think she said she'd fight at 50-51. And they just, 
unlike myself, doesn't matter how much they eat, they're not putting the weight on. So it's hard to get them up there. And you, you've mm-hmm. got, um, you've got one under 50. I've got, yeah, I, I have Gabrielle, but again, she's only sort of three or four fights, right? So she's not really up there as far. Technically, I think very good for her versus her experience level. But again, even finding her opponents is just so hard. It's mm. kind of like, well, we will just look for whatever's there. It's kind of, it becomes a case of she, she'd she fought, uh, obviously we'd spoken about matching her against CZ that <clears throat> on routes when we were able to go. Um, she'd fought Lucy Deadman up in Queensland as well. But after that, you really, there's just not, they, they don't really have, they don't really have a choice, do they? They just have to fight up, I find, under that. And I've got, it's frustrating now because I have a few girls when we can train that are like, 49 48 50 and i'm thinking what do i do with you like, we can't, what do we do with you even first timers i've got a couple of first timers yeah this is what i mean and yeah, there's nothing really for them so tricky and it kind of makes it hard because like you know if you get i think at one point cc had had two fights or three fights and then uh, Lou, uh sally had had eight or nine fights and there was, there is definitely, there was a skill, big skill gap between them. And you want to sort of match it, but it's almost at a point of like, this is all I got. Like, um, mm-hmm. you got to take it. And like, um, Riddler's girl, Danny came down from yeah, on one of the root yeah, shows. They fought and it's like, you know, Cece for her weight division, she's so tall. And it was just so hard for Danny, but it's like, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, hard. And, it's and, like it's like having ninety five kilo uh, guys to fight. Like Alex Robertson, how many Muay Thai guys is there for him to fight? And that's I know Daz had because obviously Danny and I think her natural weight is under fifty, and he had another girl who'd fought on roots a few times, Carissa, and she was under fifty as well. But I think she did she did her ACL, um, and she was under fifty too. So I think Dad had Daz had a few, but it's it's trying to get it to match up at the same time, right? It it becomes very much a timing thing as well. Yeah, and I guess the other thing too is like if if they're a bit, um, you, you will end up with a few girls and stuff around the same weight at the same gyms because they actually end up with training partners that they can train mm-hmm. with. So you end up lumped up in certain gyms, and then you're having to try to uh, I guess try to match fights. And again, like I think we mentioned last week, a lot of the girls especially end up becoming really good friends because it's such a small female mm. fighter community and then getting them to fight each other it makes it even harder because they're just mates and they don't want to the most success i've found with those smaller girls has often been the mta events things like what the nationals mm. was or like the albell cup or because yeah. a lot of people will just go and, and yeah sure i think sometimes there can be a massive skill gap because you got that zero to three and maybe put some people put them in where it's like Ah, maybe the equivalent, they might do a development day instead, but hey, let's go to the tournament. Then you've got some other girls who are clearly much better than them. But I find that's the place where you can usually have the most success, like getting experience for that, the, the, that sort of much lighter sub 50 kind of category. Yeah. Um, and then I guess we move sort of under 50. I know like the weight division, what is it, 51 something, Andrew? 51, yeah. And then we go up, oh, I think it might even go, it's a high 52 and 50. Mm. next it's one a really small that. jump in there yeah i guess at 52 alma now um and then you're looking at asoria she's looking at coming back as well um little kim she's still still fighting now i think she's up in queensland right yeah um so uh, yeah it, it's just some like no one I, I think between the three of those though to be quite honest like, like obviously sorry's um just had a little bub so Shout out to everyone at Sit Sauton, but um, yeah, we've got no, we've got some uh, some down here who can fight. Like she was matched to fight Nat Hill on this Roots card at fifty one point five. So some can get down there as well, and I, I think she can get down to like fifty one flat. But I mean, she hasn't had a fight for a couple of years, so I think that's why we're being sort of tentative about fifty one and a half. And then obviously Nat's in Queensland. Um, Joanne La at the moment will fight 53 at the lightest, but she can do 52. I don't, I don't know how she's, you know, she's her frame. Um, when she's at that way, she's, she, she's so strong. And then mm-hmm. you got spring Sia. She can, 
she can do 52, I guess, as well. Um, so we've got those three girls in Melbourne uh, that can kind of potentially get under 52 kilos, but they've, you know, some and some and spring have fought each other. Some and Joanne can't fight each other because they're teammates and Joanne and spring can't fight each other because they used to be teammates and they're like best buddies and stuff. And mm. it's just tricky. Yeah. And then we've got um, Selena from dynamite as well. So I, I, I like, that level over 10 15 fights female division in victoria is not that deep either well then when you come down i guess down our way and you (laughs) sorry around our new south wales and act speaking of sits or ton there's obviously um, marina who is around that weight as well who's fought on roots and whatever there's um like a stable mate of hers tracy who is around that weight again um there is dala from eight limbs in Bondi as well. Again, she's got what's the weight division Maggie, her time yeah. is? Yeah, uh, I think that's around. Me, I think she's fifty-two. It might be fifty-one. Mm. And then I've got the younger sister of Diandra, Davina. She's yeah. fifty-one, fifty-two. She's about ten fights, but she's at that point now where she just has to fight anyone as well. So yeah. I think there's a, there's a few really nice that matchups could there. Work to be out made. quite good at the tail end of um at the tail end of lockdown maybe by the end mm. of the year. Mm. Uh, or in Sydney anyway, I don't know if anyone else will take us. So we might have to start our own thing. <laughs> but uh and then well then we go up into the 53s and, and 55s. Uh I mean 55 we've got Yolanda's back but she's super keen over five but that's tricky in itself. Um we there was because um Amanda Junaku and uh the uh Peasy's girls up there as well. Um I can't remember her name, they fought on the last eruption. Uh Natalie and um uh, Brittany. Brittany. Natalie and Brittany yeah. both get under 55. Yep. Um I don't I'm not sure, but I don't reckon Brittany would get up 55. Uh, actually, sure. you're right. I think PZ said no. 56 kilos was her lightest. So then that pushes up to 57, which is, in my opinion, Tiff. And then Deandra. Um, who else we got floating around at 57? And Andy, is that a, do you think Yolanda has to fight that bit heavier now? Do you think she has to take the 57 kilo fight? Because I can't think of 55s there for her to. It'd pretty much be that, really. Yeah. Like, um, Unless borders open, like the, the plan was originally to go over overseas and have a couple of warm up fights and see what we can do and, and just test everything out. But then obviously that didn't happen. And then we were going to fight Deandra and then um, to, just to, you know, to get that fight and, and get back in and see how that worked out. But unfortunately, that didn't happen as well. So I thought uh, uh, Yolanda became the uh, chosen one of the uh, PTJ Boxing Club after her upset boxing win. Man. Mm, still came to do it again that was a big one too that was a big win for her still came to do it again though we're not happy (laughs) but but um it's funny with the boxing scene at the moment too eh? i mean women's boxing is a real um kind of i mean a lot of people there's a lot of interest in there but they just simply don't have a talent pool at all and i think i feel like the boxing women's boxing like a really like steep um rise to the top pretty quickly if you can have a couple of good wins and overseas they're looking for them i mean uh, especially if you've got the social media pool and you look like um uh, is it uh, 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 fighting again this weekend it's funny because yeah. uh, there's a um there's a girl fighting shannon o'connell soon who's had who's a decorated yeah. amateur and she's had taylor four pro boxing fights and she's t- taylor yeah taylor mm. and she'll be fighting uh shannon o'connell who's like I don't know. She's had 30 fights or something. and she- Massive step up. And her last, I'd seen Taylor's last boxing fight and it was against a female Muay Thai fighter from up in yeah. Queensland. Oh, Callie Ryan. It was against yeah, a girl yeah. called Callie Ryan. I'm pretty sure that was her. That's a massive step up. Yeah, and then you had Taylor like fight. Nat Hill fought on the, uh, on one of mm. the, I think Tim Zoo on the cards um, fought the girl, the boxing girl uh, from Bondi. And I, I thought Nat won that fight and the powers that be gave it to the other girl, but it's like there, there is, there's going to be a bit of crossover from the Muay Thai girls jumping in. 
And saying that, we forgot about 57. Um, Katie Mitchell is still active. and She's had a couple of boxing fights now too, I think. But yeah. I don't know how she makes 57, man. She's tall. Is that the girl yeah. from Sin to More? Yeah. 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 What did her and Deandra fight at? Was it 57 or 59? They never, they never fought. No? I think you're thinking about Jacinta. You think of Jacinta. Oh, Jacinta. Yeah, they were from the same. They were stable mates. Yeah, they were from the same. Yeah. And Jacinta's now sort of focusing more on MMA, I MMA. believe. Yeah. Seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. And you, you I guess really we've got to just have the rematch between Deandra and Tiff this summer 4th. Ready, but ready, right. ready for that one. I'm still waiting for you to cut the belt in half and send half to us and half to Tiff. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I've seen a show in Sydney that once gave out a belt to both people when they oh, had a belt. Excellent. There we go. Just shit one off, man. Drawing a title. Run, so run her up. Uh, that was a draw. And like I think it would actually be a good exercise for us to uh, maybe watch that fight live and maybe score the rounds and see how we score it. We'd love that. Get amongst it. Diandra and Tiff. That's the man. That's the fight. That's the fight. Um, um, so, guys, the last week, uh, City Chai and Taiwan Chai, we were all wrong. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Were we, asleep. Were, were we wrong? Yeah, that's, that was frustrating, man. So, I feel like um, in watching it even at the time that it was almost like that one Chai was like um, not even going all out, just almost showing too much respect. Too much the, respect. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to watch it again. But um, And then in the later round, it was like, I don't know, three, nothing happened. Like I was so excited to see it, waited all the way up. And then three three rounds, like, like I hate three, three three minute rounds, especially if they're not going for it. Like, and then it was over. Like, oh, mad. He fell over, got taken down a couple of times. And yeah, and I felt like, I felt like Tawan Chai did like just enough to win. And he did like for the first and second round. The first round, he just edged. I had it like one or two kicks ahead. And then the second one, a, a bit clearer. The third one, he, he clearly lost. And then the fight finishes. I was watching it live with some of our members in one of our members only group. And I said, oh, yeah, Tawan Chai is like first and second round. See to try the third. Like, look, he's just he's just bowed to him. Like, he's beaten the older boxer. He's shown respect. Like, see you later. And they gave it to. And I just was like, I don't know. I'm gonna have to watch it back. But I did not have it, it, one again. One judging. Who knows? But man, I didn't give it to see the try. So you know how in one championship they like with the MMA fights they score as a full fight Thanks, instead of rounds. With their Muay Thai, is they scoring round by round, or is it if you finish round top, by round? It's round by round. It's round by round. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they do ten point must round by round. Yeah, it's it's funny because when we were watching the amateur boxing over the Olympics, and you guys we were talking about having an open scoring, I actually spoke to the board here, and they said they could, and I forgot about it to do this weekend to see oh. if we could put the open scoring, put a round up, put the scores up at the end of every round. If if Mesto, that's my favorite thing going to that. international IFMA competitions. How good was it? That, especially when it's like ru- someone like Russia and Thailand. Oh. They always have the two biggest teams, and there's always, especially if it's European judges, and the Thais know they've been ripped off, or like oh. vice, and the Russians think they've got it, and it's just like. Man, I, I feel like it creates such an amazing atmosphere. I'm a massive fan of it. I think even education wise is sick too, because. Hmm. Like just get, getting able to see all the judges, and I think the way that they show the scores in the Olympic boxing is confusing as hell. Like you look at the, the bottom of the display is terrible. Go, the display is yeah. terrible. What are you You're doing? Gonna, you know, <laughs> I, I, and like me and Kieran, at least we've got functioning brains, and we're not drunk I, after them. I don't know how to. Have you. You I was struggling, man, the whole time. I just stopped looking at it. It was just a blur <laughs> to me. So, Ooh. but the but the anticipation when you get two fighters going into the last round. Mm like locked heads waiting for that mm. third round. It would be so sick to have it. I'm, I'm sure. I don't think we could do it here, but um, uh, I would I love spoke it here. I to Simone <laughs> Bailey, who's the chairman of the board here. She said we could. And then I think we were discussing it. I I looked at a software called Smooth Comp that's been used really uh, massively through, especially the jiu-jitsu community. And I'm going to use it for the uh boa events i do and we're going to use it for muay thai victoria for all the registrations and rankings and stuff 
but they've got like the sickest scoreboards. So they've got a few different custom scoreboards. You can put it, put everything in and then it goes on your, you can send it out to your live stream and also like the screens at the venue. Um, and I completely forgot this in the excitement of this week, but that, I think that's what we'll do. I want to try with a few of the fights and see how everyone, the oh, only man. thing is you'd hate to be a judge sitting there at the end of a round and potentially <laughs> get a controversial scorecard with beer bottles in the back. I mean, that, that's Speaking the only which, thing. Can I just do a quick shout out to my brother who once, I don't know if you know the story, uh, once copped a, a potato in the back of the head judging <laughs> one of the fans. <laughs> <laughs> a potato who throws a potato <laughs> why do you have a potato well, you a know they were show? on a table then if they were yeah. throwing potatoes they were definitely on a table <laughs> anyway yeah it would be hard being a judge that's for sure you'd have to put maybe some boxers, helmets some, maybe some Thai style stadium boots just some oh man I want to make get those made mm, absolutely <laughs> and just be so, there's a couple of judges I know I'd worry that they'd doze off in there if there was a bad <laughs> just be like watch, watching the oh. fights live it's hilarious uh, yeah uh, did you, um, um, I, I didn't catch I, I'll i be completely honest I've, I've had a big day lots of uh, exercise and driving uh, fell asleep before the WA show last week even started what happened? Man, I, I can't it. because um, Misa Fury was on and, yeah. and uh, MTGP. I, every night I'm, I'm gone by nine o'clock. Mm, like I fall yeah. asleep and one championship and a WA show, especially with the main event, such a struggle. So, um, Kieran, you watched it? I stayed awake. Yeah, I stayed. We, I voiced, we did a FaceTime with some of our fighters and, they woke me up a couple of times. I did, I'll admit, I did fall asleep like once or twice. But um, it, it, I mean, for the obviously, it's a, it's a road to Muay Thai Grand Prix, right? So there was a number of amateur fights, a number of people whom I, I didn't know of or recognize. There was the, the main ones that we'd spoken about was obviously the four girl. Um, and then there was the main event between the two boys. So the, the four girl, um, there was Allegra and Saskia or Saskia. I don't want to say the wrong one. I think it's Saskia. Um, <clears throat> and then that was like, a, a, Allegra looked very aggressive and strong, but I guess when it comes to, to, to Thai boxing, just lost her way a bit in the clinch and a few, it, it, it was sort of a, a bit of a, um, washing machine fight like it, it, it was hard to show like they were both clashing quite a bit uh -huh. um and then the second one you had megan as well now saskia won that first one but they've since they're gonna put allegra in the final because saskia didn't make weight appropriately yeah, it was gonna be a dark horse as well i watched her well she fought my, uh, b up in being obviously b was is pretty fresh but she's a real strong chick eh? i think it was a clash of styles Okay. One of those times when you've got a bit of a clash of styles and maybe neither could properly show what they were what they were capable of. Did you see you had so in between I fell asleep and I woke up. I sorry, I woke up towards the end of Megan's fight. Oh sorry, um, Mika is it uh Mika, uh Mika Michael from uh oh no, I didn't he's oh he he again a Darwin story, he came up uh, and fought up in there and Man, he he's like crazy strong and like a beautiful style. And um, I know he was fighting on the card and how to win, but I missed out. I wanted to Is check he that from out. Tom Loyal's gym? No, no, he's from Darren's gym. Oh, oh, right, right. Max, I thought you were saying he was the young kid. No. no, no, no. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. He fought uh, Johnny Craster. Right. On Seldy's gym, but anyway. And then the main event was. was the big Jono's boys. retirement fight with mm. Big Al. Mm. Don't know. They, man, credit to him. He took some. He took some big shots from Big Al. Uh, big Al was really trying to trying to 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 put it on him. I think maybe gave John or Jono two or three eight cut, cuts. But being John eight count, sorry, being Jono that he normally is, just you know kept standing back up and was good to go and put it on and the boys just had a bit of a had a good solid smack out and then that was that because i think the fight was originally meant to be five rounds but i think with Jono having been in 
but they, they had a lockdown mm. in Northern Territory traveling down. And then I think he had food poisoning or something as well. So I think um, I spoke to um, Riddler the other day. They just before the show, they managed to get it down to three rounds because I, I think John O might have actually been crook enough to at a point of pulling out. Mm. But like, I think John O fought has fought on my show previous the one time he fought on my show he was like 84 kilos or something and big al man like you know you were here for his last fight andrew like he gets down to 95 kilos but i think he's over 100 and something fairly lean and that's just yeah like man like i I never hold muay thai pads for anyone obviously because i don't work but anyway and like he was kicking in the back room and I'm like, God, I'm such a pussy. This is like, actually, I feel like everything's shaking. And then I spoke to Blair and Blair goes, I I don't want to hold pads for him anymore. He goes, everything, I feel like everything's about to break all the time. And I'm like, it's Blair saying it. So the guy's just Mm, super strong, strong. but Mm. yeah, like credit to Jonah for getting through. And then absolutely, uh, he's announced his retirement, which is, uh, I'm glad to hear he's done that because at his weight, there's just the only thing waiting for you is big time bro- um, brain trauma. Like those guys, like that kid that he fought from Adelaide Branco from uh, Rikers Gym. Like, Rikers. man, you don't, want to, you don't want to get hit in the head by those guys if you don't have to. I saw the um, exchange on the Australian uh, Oz Muay Thai Instagram page and big shout out to the Demacoli clan. But, uh, yeah, did you see that on the Instagram page? They showed one of the exchanges. It was pretty hectic. It was like just wild, just going it's for a, it. It's always a good time when big boys get in the ring and throw down. Yeah, man. man. Much love, man. Much love to the big yes. boys that just get in and throw down. It's, it's always yeah. a crowd favorite. Shout out to them both. I got to say that, and I've said this before, once the guys get over sort of 85, 86 kilos, I'd rather watch them fight K1 than Muay Thai. <laughs> I just, mm. I, I genuinely, I don't want to see 95 kilo guys clinching. Depends. Um, Riddler's boy, when he fought uh, Big Al, that was a real good fight to watch. Uh, um, yeah. That was one of the best heavyweight technical, yeah. like Muay Thai style. Um, I don't know his name, sorry, but that was one of the he best the balls. heavyweight style fights. Huh? Who? He kicked you in the nuts for the video, for the photo, for the campaign I ran. I don't know what you're talking about, man. You know what I'm talking about. Next. <laughs> um, with, One FC. Like the boys obviously know what they're doing, but man, I did the whole road to business, road to rebellion thing for a while. And uh, it's a slippery slope to get into because the show starts to look a lot like your normal show. And uh, it, you're just ending up rebranding a whole separate thing. So... I, I, you know, I know they know what they're doing, but I'd really, especially in WA where they have to put guys with pads on and stuff. I think having a road to concept, it, it's so hard to do, especially with the limited amount of fighters. But why aren't you know, the WA guys just smashing out those padded fights in gyms and getting that out of the way, man? Mm-hmm. Like it's only how many you only have to have three, don't you, or five? It, 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 it gets big progressively big. reduced because I was talking to Hammer and I'm like, man, if we put padded fights on our shows in melbourne on our, our pro shows like the fans would murder us and i mean that yeah. theirs is different over there they don't have a choice but i, I think what like um kaylee and riddler were doing with their evolve series and then blair and kurovic do with their show where it's just like a padded amateur show i think mm. it, it it's it just, I think it saves, like we still joke about the whole road to rebellion thing, what it ended up becoming. Um, I think it's just a slippery slope to go down to because you end up with two shows with two names that kind of start to look essentially the same, but mm. not quite. And then you chuck, you know, it, yeah. It's a I think if you're going to do it, you should do it like significantly smaller personally. Mm. Like do it, you know, a bit more budget location, budget everything, and then. Just do it in the Try and just bang those fucking padded fights out of the way, man. Like, even in Sydney, it does my head in enough. Like, we're not fully padded, but try and, like, if it's five fights, just do five development days and then they're on the card and then out you go, or five in house <coughs> ones. I don't know. I don't know why they do it personally, just, but just, just do them in a gym. I mean, you got like Pomorn has done a show in the gym. I think he's doing his next one in his Myri location. 
to... I don't see why we don't have more. You've got a venue, you've got a ring, you've got so much covered. You can maybe fit a hundred people in there too. Very UK style. Let's just start mm. running some. I like it. Added, yeah, some shows there. Just crank it out. Why not? Yeah, I mean, like we we thought about doing some amateurs at, with Muay Thai Victoria, where where like Muay Thai Victoria is. There's a very clear separation of amateur pro here as far as these are padded fights. Um, it's run by a sanctioning body, not by a promoter. And um, we thought about doing it at gyms. I think the only sort of hesitancy we had with that was like, you know, our first event at, at the basketball place, we had five, 600 people came to watch and we charged like 25 bucks or 30 bucks entry, which I think is about the right amount. Yeah, It's just stuff with like at a gym having pe- bathrooms and stuff for that many people. And But I don't know, like I, I feel like even for me, like, I've done both sides, two ends of the spectrum. So development days were specifically designed to be run in, in our state, in gyms, low pressure, get them out there. And I feel like it's this, like the quality has improved because of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, my last one at Siam to Sydney, I think one before, because we we're just madly getting out of COVID, I just wanted to do one in the bigger venue and then the main card after having a break from COVID. Yeah. And then, and then uh, I, I feel like I really dropped the ball. Like personally, like I, in that there was too much pressure on the fighters and, you know, it, it's not supposed to be that way for me anyway. And a couple of people mm-hmm. mentioned it as well. And it, it's, that's not what it's about. It's supposed to be for them to jump in, have a bit of fun, get hurt, get not get hurt, whatever, and get it out of the way. And then get into the bigger crowds and stuff. But yeah, anyway. I, I think like uh, we, we've got some footage. We'll put it up eventually. But what we did with that first Muay Thai Victoria show was um, it was a basketball court at like an Italian club. It we, put, we put no light and sound in there. We, we had the ring. There was no walkout music. Like we had a laptop there that we played some music between rounds just so it wouldn't be awkward. And we had the Thai music and there was no walkouts. We we modeled it <clears throat> right sort of along the uh, Boxing Victoria okay. shows where we have chairs ringside. The next fight sits there waiting. They jump in the ring. There's no announcer. Bang it out, call the decision and go. And like you said, we really want to make it no pressure because if we can get those guys once everything's back, if we can get these guys fighting every three weeks or a month, and get eight or nine or 10 fights. Like no, no one here has an aspiration of being a, a padded world champion. Like mm-hmm. they don't, but if they can get that out of their way, develop, and then by the time they fight on Roots of Rebellion or Warriors Way <laughs> or um, Hardcore, they've had that experience and their pro debut, they're actually like, then it's something special for them. Because mm-hmm. like everyone's always like, oh, what? L- less people are turning pro in Victoria now than they used to, but it's like, people are getting the satisfaction and feel of being a fighter out of the lower level stuff. Like we, we had guys in the boxing who'd do an interclub, two one and a half minute round semi-contact. And then they'd go and put it on their Instagram. Oh, I won my fight. And I'm like, that wasn't a fight. You couldn't hurt each other. Yeah. yeah. So we've got to really like, I, you know, give people a thing to get that competitive thing out of their system. If that's all they ever want to do, brilliant. It's not, not everyone should jump in, but also have an incentive to go yeah now you get to fight pro with walkout music and fans and lights and a thing then i think it'll make it a little bit clearer so yeah low, low pressure is good appropriately. charge appropriately we could save it for another for the next chat but i feel like maybe the next one we should have a chat about uh pricing of shows and mm. yeah put that on the list boss so i think on the, yeah. uh, sorry kieran yeah. No, I was just going to say, like, pay your dues kind of thing. Like that, That's the structure of it. It's, it comes back to the mentioning before about the MTA-style IFMA events. I love those, man. Like, two, three days, you so, can have – I can take a team of six or seven guys, and it, it, each of them might come away with two or three fights straight away. When I – they do two like that, and you go to give them to a promoter in the future, they've already had six, seven, eight fights – they feel so much more comfortable, eh? Yeah, it's I and I think if we can get away from this aversion of padding, which is still sort of exists at some level, oh, I don't want pads or this, that, or the other, which exists still to some extent. If we can push that away, 
we're laughing. It's going to help that 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 sort of pathway thing we touched on last week. Honestly, um, like the amount of padding we, we, we've implemented here, they still wear 10 ounce gloves. They wear the soft shin guards, which is just, you know, it's it's not no shin guards, but those shin guards, it's good for them to be able to back up to training a few days later, essentially, they'll be able to fight again and headgear, open face headgear. And it's like, it's padding, but it's not like we're not getting them to wear thick shin guards and big 16 ounce gloves and stuff for, for our pure amateur level. Um, and they get those three twos and elbow pads and they everyone has to fight full tie. So we had everyone above the age of 14. They fought full tie. It was great. No one, there was one knockout in 23 fights. We, you know, we, we ended up finding two really good referees. So, yeah, I like the 16s for, for our dev days here because... Well, well that's a development. You can't, win. You can't knock someone out. You do yeah. get the odd one, but it forces them to think about, mm. all right, I, I'm not going to knock this bloke out. And they can be quite easy to win if you use your head some of the development day fights. Like I tell my guys, like, just keep your hands up. It's a 16-ounce glove. It's not going to get through there. Be smart about it, and you're yeah. going to win. You're not going to knock someone out. So have a bit of a think about it, but... Yeah, food for thought. Did any either of you guys catch any of the News of Fury? I know Hayden Sitlin Jai was had his first his fight Hayden back. Hayden. No, I didn't. I, I I really wish I'd saw seen Hayden get back. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully he, he sticks it out for a little bit more and gets a few fights under his belt. It'd be good to see him fighting again. And he fought that Matt Stevens, who is quite a tricky customer. Yeah, fight, like he very sleek. He comes from that. Um, sort of taekwondo or, 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 yeah I think it's maybe a taekwondo background and he does do a lot of like spin back kicks and whatnot but he executes them quite well he is quite dangerous and he's yeah. physically very strong too so he was a hard and an Adelaide fan favorite a lot of people love him in Adelaide so I think he was um, that's a tough one for Hayden to to come back to yeah yeah well yeah. hopefully yeah like I said it's not the first of a long time um, so now coming up internationally this week, there's uh, one championship on Sunday, Saturday, Friday night. God, terrible with days at the moment. Um, there's only <laughs> one. Day. There's one more Thai fight, but there's uh, the MMA Grand Prix. There's actually some proper sick fights on that. I know, Andrew, you don't like clinching unless it's standing up. Just anything on the ground, then it's not grappling and clinching. Um, and there's one uh, Anissa is finally getting to fight. She's been training and signed up to one championship forever. It'll be interesting to finally see her fight. And then we've got um, Brian's girl. What's her name? Jackie. She's fighting. Jackie. Jackie. So Jackie's the girl that beat Wonder Girl or Supergirl. Yeah. Wonder Girl. Yeah. She's fighting Daniela. Uh, I think she's currently based at FA Group. Not wrong. Um, had a bit of a look at, I think it was like a recent or last fight. She's the Argentinian girl. Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, it, unless unless things have changed dramatically, I think it's going to be a um, easy night for Jackie personally. But I just like the last fight I watched. I think um, the one I can't remember the Thai girl's name. Uh, I think she lost to her. It was pretty close, but the, she just didn't look like her shots were really like clean shots like could cl clinch quite well obviously being from fa group and that but that the, when the shots were landing they weren't real like super heavy i don't know how that's all going to work out yeah kieran any thoughts you got a winner for us i'm a big i'm a big brian hope joy fan hey they both of his i'm big fan of both of his girls um they yeah they a bit a bit different like this you're not stylistically there he looks like he's frozen <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's just gone into that end of beer like it's just zone out i yeah like stylistically they're obviously like a, 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 a bit different but yeah i'm a big brian pope joy fan and the way that he's his girls always come and he's quite a smart dude too I just actually to speak, got yeah. stronger now too eh? like you're definitely mm. physically much stronger does it mm. So yeah, I mean, I would, I would put, I would put Jackie to win. I've seen that other girl fight before too, the one from FA, and and yeah, I would put Jackie to win that quite comfortably, I think. And then yeah, and then that that I know where yeah, this is the Muay Thai hour, not the MMA hour, but I put um, I'm gonna put Itsuki, the Japanese girl, to win that 
I, that eight girl, she's, man, she's something else. She's strong. Yeah. Very talented girl. I reckon she'll win that. Michelle Nicolini is in the, she's the main event. So she's like one of the goats of women's grappling. She actually ended up taking a last minute bout on my bow event about six years ago. And a girl here took the fight and man, like. Sorry, what hour is it? Sorry? What hour is it? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Huh? We're talking about adults are speaking, Andrew. The combat hour. That girl, uh, Michelle, is a wizard. She's like, she's <laughs> incredible. So that'll be a good, worthwhile fight to watch as well. Anyway, Andrew, any, uh, oh, yes. On the local front, Sunday mm, night. The return. Oh, it's I got that shirt. Yep. Yep. Finally, I feel like. I feel, like, thought, so, I feel like I yeah. feel like a promotion virgin all over again. It's been Can you talk us through before we go in the matches? I'm super curious uh, as to what you might have had to have done or signed off on from a safety perspective to get this across the line. What well, the, no, do? the, what the only got to do? as one of the only Daniel Andrews supporters in the Muay Thai community in Victoria. Fuck, I just got a whole lot of unsubscribes. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's that's the, the, that's the, the numbers just going like this. <laughs> I don't know. I'm one of the few people who hasn't run a state before, so I know I can't do it any better. So, <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> silence. Well, you keep slagging my girl off, so. <laughs> Big shout anyway, out to Gladys. Joking. So, um, <laughs> this show, professional suicide, sorry. Flames. Um, oh, sure. Come on, what do you got to do? Yeah, so like a <laughs> bit of background. This show was meant to be May 28. Both you boys were meant to be down here. Um, it was a completely sold out event, like to the point where I actually... We could have sold, I reckon, another 500 tickets and we didn't. Um, and then two nights out from the show, it was looking all fuzzy-wuzzy and we had to pull the pin. And we postponed it two weeks, which got postponed uh, to August 21st, August 28th. And then about four weeks ago, like, man, it's genuinely been... You've gone through it, Andrew, trying to, like, juggle a show and trying to keep it alive. Man, I can't believe the amount of just background anxiety it causes because you got all these fighters and they're training and they message their trainers and the trainers, man, I can't thank these people so enough. Hard. They've been incredible. They've been like, hey, so we don't want to stress you out, but uh, um, any, any ideas? So I sort of said to Hammer, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to, if we can have a crowd, we'll just push through with it. Because initially, even when it was going to be August 21, after the last lockdown, they emailed us and said, until August 26, you can't have a live crowd. So now I was trying to find a venue for August 28. And then this has all happened. And I contacted the board here uh, daily from Sports Victoria. She start, he started chasing things up. Then I had to email the safe events people and they just went replying. And there's no phone number to contact. It's just you've sent an email. And it says, we're working remotely, nothing. So last week, I think Thursday at two o'clock, I was just going to say, we're done. I'm going to pull the show. And then I got an email back saying, if the fighters fall under this category, which they do, so it's all pro fights and it meets the criteria as of a, like a national level sport. So it may, they can compete. Uh, but with no live audience and minimal people on site meeting all the sort of requirements. So that was like last Thursday. And then it's just been chaos between then and now to like tick everything off. L luckily enough, like we know enough things over the last 18 months that they're looking for. Plus we've seen other shows run without an audience. So we kind of know what to do, but man, even Every morning I wake up, I'm like, God, don't let this fall apart. And I just spoke to uh, combat sports before and they said they've like, they've spoken to Victoria police and then specifically the co commander for the area. They've spoken to them and they're like, they're stoked about all the documentation they're getting. So there is stuff from my end and the venue, but the combat sports board here, I, I know it's popular to rip on them. 
but they actively try to get stuff done. So mm, like Simone Bailey, who's the chairman of the board is a godsend. Like the, the, shit, the amount of shit she's listened to me talk, but like daily and all the guys in the office, they're doing a lot of the background stuff. Um, and for us, it's like, we've got one really one shot to do this without screwing it up because I feel like the next five or six months, the, the audience free shows are, are only hope forward. So we, like the venue fits 2000 people, there's going to be no one in there. So we'll have everyone spread out all the check-ins, temperature checks, masks, what literally everything they need to will do. We're going to sanitize the ring between everything, everything yeah. that needs to be done, whether some of it's a bit out there or not, we're just going to do it. So lucky to have a combat sports authority that mm. might be to do that. Like here was just a real easy, nah. But do you have to do antigen testing or anything like that? Or so in Victoria, antigen testing isn't really recognised or anything. They're still doing numbers on it. Um, okay. I had an offer for someone to do it, but it doesn't make any difference. So. Cool. And do the There's, fighters have to have any, like a PCR test or do they have to have any uh, testing for COVID? No, no. But like, you got to understand like our case numbers aren't at that ridiculous amount yet. Mm. And at Sydney the level. most, sorry? Not at Sydney level yet. Not at Sydney, New South Wales. I feel like one day Gladys or someone's going to call Dan Andrews and say, keep my name out of your mouth. Sick of it. <laughs> Every two seconds, like, randomly, uh, you yeah. <laughs> know. It's like you're Gladys and he's me. Just any <laughs> test. Fuck your city. Fuck your state. Ah, shit. Yeah. Um, no, Sorry, but we we we're gonna have like basically the fighters once they fight and their fights over and they've had a check up by the doctor, they basically got to get packed up and leave. So the the turnover of people through there is going to be so minimal. Um, so they can't watch and hang around in the stands or anything no, like that. No, no, nothing, nothing. I literally, you, you guys know when I do the shows, how many people are there volunteering and helping? Mm. We've got three people coming to help me on the day. Is Peter Sherwood going to be there? Doing no, that Peter's a there? dropkick. Peter's got a child, man. He has to spend time with his kids and his oh, crappy man. vegetable garden. Families? Who yeah, needs but oh, how about his vegetable garden? I'm the only one that speaks the truth. Oh, man, his sourdough and his vegetable garden's awesome. His and Will, actually, Pete, Will's. Too, right? Will's block right. renovation's been amazing. Mm. <laughs> nice one, Will. <laughs> Fuck, have you seen what he's been doing to his house? He's impressive. It's impressive. Yeah. He's a man of many talents. Spell check is not one of them. <laughs> okay, next. Um, yeah. So do you want to give us a rundown of that? Like, I had a quick look. Um, a lot of guys from uh, Eight Blades on. Yeah, so... <laughs> A lot of guys from Dominance, they've got five fighters on. It's, it's eight fights on the card. They've got five. Um, up until last week, they were meant to have seven because uh, Chris Newton was meant to fight Van. He, he got injured, I think, two weeks ago. And Carter was supposed to fight Jordan Fielding. So those guys are off. They were supposed to have eight. And Ben Higgins was going to fight uh, Jaden Stady. So that was interstate fights. They're going to say Dominance has five. Uh, eight Blade have three or four uh, and then braveheart's got a couple obviously hammers gym uh the ring gym uh wicked martial arts with q and tracy uh dylan letuet from ufd under joe coverdale so yeah it's um there's a li there's i think seven gyms involved in total um but man they they've been unreal like the sponsorship support looked really cool, man. It's great to see Jim's getting behind a show and, and and chucking a little bit of coin in there as well. Man, like, you you know how bad I am at getting sponsorship for the shows. All my sponsors have essentially approached me and putting it out there, like, it's just not my nature for that sort of stuff. But the amount of people who jumped on board, like, the Instagram, we're pumping it out, all the sponsors. And once I put the card out there, it's just, it's ridiculous. Like, it's so good. Like, last week when it was starting to go ahead, I said to the guys, I might only be able to give you guys, for the lower level guys, pay-per-view revenue as purses, like 
we'll bump it up to whatever. And then, then I was like, no, nah, we're just going to do the purses. I, I sort of figured it out. I went, if I don't get a cent out of sponsorship or pay-per-view, how much money will I lose doing this? And I'm like, it is what it is. We'll try it. And now all the sponsorship that's come on board and the pay-per-views, I think a, all the fighters get what they get. Plus they'll get, I think someone will get really good pay-per-view cut of the show. Um, and then you got like, man, people like, like even Tali and O'Neill, they've got fighters on the show. They, they haven't worked for ages. They just sponsored uh, the undercard fight of the night. So that it's going to be like um, each fighter gets $300 bonus mm. for an undercard fight. Like, man, it, it's amazing. Yeah. It's so good. It, it mm. well, I just, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's going to be interesting to see because the environment's perfect for it, right? Like we're always as promoters being that little bit hesitant about, well, for me anyway, for a smaller show about promoting a live stream too early, especially in a place like Sydney where you can't even get a crowd or footy game. But if people can't go to each other's houses, then they should be buying individual tickets. So therefore, hopefully it works out really well for you, man. So even though, uh, yeah. I've got other words for you. I hope it works out right for you, man. Look, honestly, the goal is just to run it. I mean, obviously, my gym's been closed more than it's been open since last year, and we lost a bunch of money on a couple of other shows we didn't get to do and a lot of other stuff. I just don't essentially doing it, don't didn't want to lose a big chunk of money. And it was like, look, if it's not a business, it's just everyone needs it. Like even myself, yep. like you guys yeah. know, talking to me, um, I haven't taken this whole thing as hard as a lot of people have. But the minute I found out I could do it, I could actually feel like my face was like being pulled apart, smiling. So mm -hmm. like, I and every trainer and stuff that's messaging me at the moment are like, we finally have something to look forward to. So, you know, between now and Sunday night, just whatever needs to be done. Like I said, we'll literally do anything that needs to be done to make sure it happens. And I'm going to say it because I know that you won't sigh, but if anyone's in the position to do so, if, if you would have, say, if you live with someone who you'd normally go to the show with and you would buy two tickets and you're in a position to do so, consider maybe buying the stream twice like you would two tickets if you're in a position to do so. Because I think whilst, is it necessary? No, you can both watch it on the TV, but I think as a gesture and for what size doing in the climate that it is, that it is yeah, I would just, I think if you're in a position to do so, I think that would be an amazing thing to help the show and just help the sport. Thank you. And um, the other thing is anyone who's watching um, or listening, make sure when you buy the stream, there's a little drop down menu with all the fighters names on them. Um, so if you, you would normally buy a ticket from a fighter to come to the show, or you're a fan of theirs, select their name. If you don't care and you just want the, uh, the event, just pick the event. But if it's like you're a massive Alexi fan or a massive, like guys like Alexi and River, the amount of support they get live at a show is ridiculous. So they're, they're kind of like, I know how much tickets River sold for the show when he was supposed to be live. So I know he's getting, he'll potentially be taking a massive pay cut, close to 50% of his purse fighting on a closed circuit show. Um, so yeah, if you were going to come watch River or whatever, pick his name because we do give him all commission. There's guys on the undercard that man, they they sold so many tickets for the show in May, and they're going to miss out on some of that. So no one really fights Muay Thai for the money at the moment. But if you're doing it, just uh, give it a little, just flick and select their name, and then yeah, that way they they just get a little bit extra, which you know a bunch of little extras adds up. Cool. So we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to throw it all out in the line now and pick who's going to win the main. I'm going to stay out of it. So main events, oh. Alexi versus Hivadaz. Um, Give us a rundown five, on oh, yeah, 65 kilos. Sorry. Is that 65, is it? Yeah. How's Alexi going to go with the weight, you reckon? Apparently good. So, you know, Alexi... Has had about two years off fighting. I think his last fight was with Chalk. And then before that, he fought Singdam. Since then, he's kind of taken a head trainer position at 168 um, in Melbourne as a Muay Thai trainer. He's got some amateur guys and stuff under him, some pro dudes. And I think 
where normally getting into that role sort of starts to pull people away from fighting. Like, don't get me wrong. I think Alexi doesn't have a lot of years ahead of him as far as fighting. Like he's got kids and all that sort of stuff. But I think for him, it's kind of that little break and having a group of students and stuff that look up to him and things. I think it's refreshed him a little bit for the fight. And he was going to fight at 67. So originally, if anything had gone to what it was going to go August 25, um, Alexi was going to fight Corey Smith and River was meant to fight Chalk. So um, mm. Cor- Chalk couldn't come down. So Rivers River can fight 62 kilos. So he's moving up to yeah. 65. Alexi's coming down to 65, which is what he used to fight at. And then, yeah, so it'll be... <clears throat> it'll be a, interesting. It'll be a real clash of styles between River's sort of style of fighting and Alexi just going out there and doing what he's always done. Mm. Andy? Who do you boys have? <laughs> Nicely, that one. I could straight out the back line. Good one. The, uh, I don't know. So for me, I, I, if if Alexi makes a 65 comfortably and, he, and, and he's not going to be like hurting to do that, um, and he fights a strong, like a strong Alexi fight rather than the rip, spin and rip type of thing. I think he'll have a good chance of winning. I've, um, but I feel like if he goes down that path and tries to almost fight um, Rivers' fight, he's going to lose on points. So um, it all, it's, it's, I think the fight's in uh, Alexi's hands, to be quite honest, because of the weight difference as well. Mm. Mr. Kieran? And he's called the Flash for a reason, right? He's a quick boy. It's like catching, yeah. like thinking you can catch him is one thing, and then catching him is the other thing. Yeah, man. And if 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 Alexi can be switched on to that quickly enough, then I think Alexi can can win it. But uh, yeah, again, it's one of those fights where you you think as a trainer, oh, I know what we can do. Like here's our game plan. Here's how we can win it. But it often can unfold quite differently. And, and River's one of those guys, I think when you stand in front of him, you think you, you've got it, you think you've figured it out, but yeah. Man, I've, I've matched River, I don't know, eight, nine, ten times over the years on the shows. And like Andrew's probably one of the few trainers that's kind of been understanding and respectful of what River can actually do. Mm. Whereas I feel like and this used to happen with Alexi back in the day. People used to just go, man. And I was like, listen, man, I've cornered against Alexi two or three times. And that guy, like, when he's on, like, he gives anyone a hard fight and he mm. knows how to hurt people. And same with River. Like, I've had a few trainers who kind of go, oh, yeah, yeah. And, like, the stuff they've sent me, I'm like, man, River maybe doesn't fight super traditional Thai style. But there's something legitimately special about that kid with his mm. speed and timing, and he's he like he does mm, what he does, absolutely. and it suits yeah. him. And they, both these guys, like they get man, people underestimate them. Like I remember even when Alexi fought um, Mitch Seth in WA, I, I reckon we all thought Mitch was going to just walk through him, and mm. it was a it was a like a close fight. But Alexi just was like, oh shit, Alexi can, you know. Like you can't ever sort of dismiss him. So I feel like this one, it, it's it, it's funny you talk about the way that Alexi preparation was. It'll be a little bit different this time, having young guys looking up to him and stuff. And I actually remember listening to Rivers' um, podcast again. I think it was on the Combat Chat podcast with the boys. Um, in that the last lockdown, he kind of it kind of helped uh, refresh him and and keep him motivated. So hopefully, I mean, that's done the same for him this time around. And and with Alexi, man, it's going to shape up to be a cracker of a fight if they're both switched on and ready to go, you know? Yeah. And then the, I think the only other fight we'll really talk about that guys would, um, is the other five by three fight is Tim Nguyen and David Bargell. I, you guys, I don't know, you've, you've probably seen Tim fight a fair bit. Not that you've seen David, but you might not know him as well because he hasn't been on rebellion of roots for a while timmy's kind of like i've never really done this but he's a fighter that i sort of t- took on as we've made an agreement with him that i would be his promoter so i try to get him some matches interstate and stuff um and they're like 
I love those guys that's dealing with um his last fight. Uh, he fought Matt Umbai on roots. Uh, the last roots you guys were down, um, from Maddox gym, and that was a killer fight. And it was like mm. it actually was going, it was a really exciting fight. And then, um, I think Timmy got caught with a back spinning elbow, and that sort of changed the direction of the fight. But he's a kid, I've got a lot of like, I just have a lot of faith in his ability. But I, I said to them, to Theo and Bark and stuff, I'm like. I'll help promote him, but I'm, I'll do it the way done it with like Roy and stuff in the past. He's just going to get hella hard fights. He's going to lose some, he's going to win some. And that's how he's going to win his, win his supporter base. Mm. It's a, are the Alexi and River fights five rounds. Yeah. Yeah. So the five by three, then uh, Tim and David, David's had a lot of fights. He's under um, Andrew Colgrave. He's a really good, strong kid. Um, yep. So that's five by three. And then the next one's five by two. And then a bunch of other ones. Like I asked a couple of these guys when the fights fell down to bump up to five rounds and they stepped up and did it. But at the same time, man, like I think some of them have had such interrupted training. I don't know how like River stayed motivated since April. I think Hammers just basically massaged that situation really well throughout. Like mm -hmm. they've been... Man, Hammers called me every day to make sure everything's okay. <laughs> it's uh, honestly, man, like here, and you've been through it too. Like the motivate, trying to keep a fighter motivated, knowing that the shows could potentially be knocked down at any stage of the week is just, it's so hard. It's hard on the trainer. It's hard on the fighters even more so. But like one day they're like, oh man, can I just like, oh, is this even going to happen? So then they're not giving it all. And the next day, like, okay, I'm ready to go. Like the roller coaster is real. Like it's, uh, yeah, I, a big shout out to all the trainers for, you know, doing what they're doing to keep these guys motivated. I guess the the other thing advantage that you guys have got down there is that they can actually train for it. And it probably keeps the trainers um, head spaces a little bit better than what some of the other guys in lockdown have got at the moment too. So Yeah. And I think like, this one's a bigger deal because it's the first one we're doing this way. But I think what we have to look at is, and I've got to see what like Hammer and um, Mark Jelsey and stuff are doing with their shows coming up. But yeah. honestly, if it gets to the point where it doesn't look like there's any big shows coming on, we will just match a whole bunch of these guys profiles and it will be at the gym and I will set up a, just a live stream camera here and like, we'll just get some fights done to keep it going. Like, this weekend, Brian Armatudov, who owns the Pavilion, they've like majorly done me a favor with being able to run the show out of there. Like, you know, they're not hiring the venue out to me. I'm basically paying for the stuff that needs to be paid for. Um, and we just want to make sure this is a show show and we'll, we'll have the music and the light and sound. And we've got like top range production to go with it. But if the way to keep the fighters and the trainers, because man, like, even the most positive guys I know, and there is a bunch of them, they just don't post shit on social media every day who've been as positive as they can go. They're starting to go, oh God. And I just think if we can have something going that we can do safely every three weeks or four weeks until we're out of this crap, we just got to do it. Mm. Mm. Otherwise everyone's either going to retire or be my weight. Yeah. And that's not a pretty sight. <laughs> Go on, Andrew. Here's a free lob in the air. Got nothing, man. Got nothing. Just really, really proud of you for trying to really fulfill the role of the fat promoter. But anyway, that's close to the end of the hour, isn't it? Yeah. Last thing, guys. Let's. I'll just throw one thing at you because we, we, we had a chat last week and this is just a topic I wanted to get your uh, ideas on, like your training hot topic. I'll put you both on the spot. I've got my ideas. And um, what do you guys think about running? fighters I, Kieran Matt, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm, thanks bro <laughs> um, look we it's not essential I'm going to say that Mike. I'm going to start out by saying it's not you don't have to run there's a, there's a time and a place for everything in my opinion I think we place too much emphasis on running 
in athletes who don't have a lot of time to spare because they work full-time jobs. So when I look at when, when, if you, if you take the day of an athlete, like it, it, for most, for most part in Thai boxing, say they're working eight or nine or 10 hour days or whatever, and they're traveling to training here, here, there and everywhere for a lot of them, they're, they're, their increase in, in, in fitness comes from things they're doing in gym. Yes, there's a benefit to the road work and it can be beneficial dependent upon the program and the like, but I feel like a lot of trainers have their athletes waste time doing things like these, like just silly, like, okay, every, every day, 10 Ks in the morning, six Ks in the afternoon. And it's just, to me, I don't view it as beneficial. I view it as, taking up valuable time that could be spent skill training or, or, or hitting pads. And I think it could be better used as far as preservation of an athlete is concerned too, because the wear and tear on, 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 on ligaments and joints when it comes to this repetitive monotonous running, is there something to be gained psychologically grittiness, some heart health, um, longer distance aerobic work earlier in a camp? Absolutely. Yes. But I think we place too much emphasis on running and, um, yeah, that's I, it's. I think it's a big one to unpack. That's my like mm. brief little overview. Cool. I'm. Uh, I agree with some of the points, but for me, I think it's a must. Um, but when I say it's a must, I disagree with the whole like fucking 12, 12 kilometers a day bollocks. I mean, I, it's just ridiculous. Um, I think it needs to be targeted, and I think it, it's also. A, depends on the point of the fighter's career. I think at the start, there's, there should be a bigger emphasis on those longer runs or even just like the warm-up runs that we do is like a 5K run. Um, and gradually that kind of changes as they get through their career and and then towards the pro end of their career, then they've, they've got like specific, um, specific training like routines that they've got set up, whether it's with their strength and conditioning coaches or even with us. And, and we tailor around their injuries as well. Like if they're, if they're already gone, like that you could do something else. You don't need to be running on the road all the time, but yeah, I agree, man. Like it's going to be specific. I, I just, I, I just can't handle seeing that. I, I, so there was a post on my ILA the other day and, um, I think those guys are doing a fantastic job with their app and their social media. Some awesome content on there, but they posted one of the um, one of the routines for um, one of the Thai gyms over there. Uh, I'll just grab it. I think they've done it with a few of them, like gym one. Yeah, it, and it's like it just man. Yeah. It not. It's just. I, I, I in so here it is. This is their routine, and it was just. I I can't even so many gyms over there now have moved on from that. And I know like as a but there is a there's a really important point to what they did post. And what they did post was that this is a gym that actually has a lot of young athletes. So that's the difference. Um and i the problem is I feel like a lot of people will read that post and go, mm. man, oh, that's what they do in Thailand. These guys are these are kids. Mm. They're not like heavy you know, 65 to 76, even more kilogram, you know, fighters, these are kids and they probably weigh about 40 kilos. <laughs> like it's a big difference. So that being said, they were really like, they did say that in there, but I just feel like, you know, yeah. They also have, I mean, everyone who's been to Thailand knows you've got five, you've got five hours a day you can train. Yeah. You can spend time doing those runs. You can, but I think don't the get... thing is like, like Andrew said, people will always say that's what they do in Thailand. Mm. Like I know trainers who go, you don't need to do strength and conditioning, but then there's the modern gyms are doing it. And then you go back to like running, you'd need like that. People say the discipline, the mental toughness, it's like long distance running mental toughness. Who's, you know, you do 400 meters with recoveries. That's mentally breaks you real hard, like sprint training and interval training. That's even mm. more challenging. And then you think about like from an energy system sort of requirement of a sport, yeah. the sports aren't straight aerobic events. But I think one of the things is like there's a level of preparedness. So like you guys said at the stage, it's like there's base level general work capacity build, which you can do from running, which is beneficial. Then it becomes a opportunity cost of how much 
time are you spending doing that versus stuff that you could do that would be more productive and also the life thing. And I mean, you look at, you know, that weightlifting thing I sent you the other day with the Chinese weightlifting thing, Kieran, that you've seen and we talked about and like weightlifting and those real sort of sports that are deep into the exercise science and programming, not only are they doing their training cycle, but it's like the life cycle of athletes of what they do at the start of their life training as opposed to what they do at the end. And it's like, yeah, like you said, if I've got a 14 year old kid that's developing, I don't know, maybe I'm not putting him out there doing high intensity sprints all the time and frying up their like nervous system. Maybe they are doing running and they're just developing and they're building their legs and whatever else. But this whole, I mean, my Muay Thai trainer here, Ton would kill me because Ton's, we had a running joke, was like you, one of the guys, the Irish boys, he goes, if I ask him how to do this in a clinch, he just says, you need to run more. And it, John says, he goes, I can tell when they haven't run, like they're not fit on pads. And like, I'm sure there's a crossover, but at, those guys were like three or four fights, maybe developing it. But it's that, like, it's the same with boxing. It's like guys go, they're fighting three two minute rounds and they get told to run 10 Ks every day. I think this is the important part is the phrase, which I think a lot of people miss is correlation does not equal causation. Which is oh, hot topic. Oh, hot topic. Man, uh, man. Uh, yeah, let's not look. Instant we're instant not going to get too friend. deep into that because we know this oh, is very applicable hey. elsewhere. Whoa. We know this. How do, I, how do I beep this like, out? Man, well, but when we're it looking, takes away attention from my political affiliation. I'm not getting into the public health sector. Don't worry, boys. We're saving. I'm um, Sai made his remark earlier. I'm not going there. But the thing is, we don't have to look like ties aren't incredible because they run 10 or 15 Ks a day. That's not what makes them amazing fighters. And so, but I think sometimes people look at it, like you mentioned before, Andy, where people see that and they go, Oh, the ties are doing it. I'm gonna do it. I know some trainers who have their fighters run for 45 minutes and then skip for half an hour. And I'm like, what, what, like, what are you doing? That's, yeah. I'm sorry, but we are, it's, it's 2021. We, we, we know far too much to think that that is a practical application of time spent. I'm just not going to buy that. Good one. Nice one, Sai. Very well, nice, boys. No equal causation, everyone out there. Uh, <laughs> I got to put that in. Can you send me that? That's my pick a day Ponzi. I think uh, what we should actually do is go with the upgrade and go with the superior Ponzi, Ponzi, get rid of Andrew one time and bring Nathan on and talk to him about strength and conditioning mm. for sport. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be something, cool. something more relevant. It'll be happy to, happy to better step looking, just... smarter, more likable. Bring him in, the Parnham boys. So on that note, uh, not all the Parnham about boys. an amazing book. I'm going to give it a plug, The Sporting Parent. Yes. And this is particularly... In, especially with what's going on up in Queensland, they've got so many young athletes up there at the moment. I really feel like maybe getting a guest on and he can plug it, but um, it, it's, it really is an important thing for uh, parents, especially to know what the right and wrong thing to do with their kids is when it comes to sport. So maybe we should get him on. Yeah, we should. That'd be good. We, yeah. we will, we will get some guests on as well, guys. Um, Spoke to Nugget last week. He's pretty keen to come and have a chat. See you. Um, and uh, there'd be a few other guys love to get Riddler back on and PZ and Hammer and all those guys. But uh, definitely the the number one improvement we could do to the show is upgrade our uh, pandems. We can get it. Coming. We should bring Art, Art on. She can teach us about resilience. <laughs> How long have you guys been married? Resilient? Brazilian. Oh, poor Danny, man. Far out. He's got a She's great. raising a dog and you. <laughs> Danny's got a great. We've seen we should we should we'll post some photos of what I cook at home during lockdown and what he cooks at home during lockdown. Don't don't start on the Thai omelet. You didn't what do my segment, man. I was gonna have my side dishes. I need my cooking segment. Panzi's dish of the day. Dish You're of the week. Far too polite to get into this, but you notice that any any serious, if we ever have a group chat, any serious adult conversations, topics I want to discuss, I direct it straight at Kieran. It's like Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. Anyway, guys, <laughs> thank you for your time this afternoon. It's been real. Um, enjoy the rest of your extended break next week. Uh, we should, um, you guys should do a live stream and commentate the show on Facebook and everyone can listen to your commentary as well. 
because I'll potentially be Tarek Solaking it up and doing my own commentary with Matt Williams on Sunday. Are you suggesting that I pirate your show for free? No, you don't. Oh, sorry, go. Just live stream yeah. like this that you guys are talking. Haven't you seen no. Joe Rogan? <coughs> Joe Rogan. Uh, I can make that now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> We're still live, man. We're still. This isn't the part afterwards. We're oh, not yeah. It's not live anymore. <laughs> this, is the bit, this is the bit where everyone's done. still watching. I thought we were done. Sorry. <laughs> Thank yeah, man, big shout I, out to Joe Rogan, man. If Six you minutes. see the uh, if you see the uh, engagement graphs, no one's watching at this stage. <laughs> 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 Only my mom is watching it to make sure I don't use any rude words. Oh, well, sure, that that Kieran boy seems like a really nice boy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, peace out. And uh, yes. yeah, guys, uh, Rebellion Roots Muay Thai 15, a yes. small amount of trouble this Sunday night, 6 p.m. Rebellion Muay Thai to come to you backslash live. Uh, Kieran, your gym's not open back yet, but it will be soon. And Andrew's cooking hour and skateboard tutorials coming via TikTok. Love it. <laughs> Peace yeah. out, boys. Bye. Bye.